For more on this big project and the amazing things of moving trains and the high-speed rail industry, I'm joined by Zhao Jian. He's a professor at Beijing Jiao Tong University School of Economics and Management. Professor, it's good to see you. I want to ask you this, this high-speed rail network and all this investment that's going into it, I'm assuming this is all a good thing, right? Uh, at present, the China has about uh, 17,000 kilometers uh, uh, network of high-speed rails. This is the number one in the, in the world. But the problem is uh, between Beijing and Shanghai, there are each day has about uh, more than 100 pairs of high-speed train operating on it. But between uh, Zhengzhou to Xi'an, there may be only about uh, 27 pairs of high-speed train per, per day. So okay. It's, uh, okay. Well, uh, maybe, maybe you know, they, 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 are, they don't have rail everywhere, but I can tell you, it's, it's a lot better than what it is over here. So that's a good thing. Now, a lot of people are talking about yeah. the technology used in these trains, and to be fair, a lot of it, this, this technology comes from all over the world. They all have conglomerated, I guess, in China. And a lot of people are asking the question: Is up how advanced is China's technology? Your answer? Yeah, I think the technology, high-speed technology in China is the same level as Siemens and Japan. Be even before introduce a foreign technology, high-speed technology in China, China has their own technology to build a high-speed rail, can operate uh, then more than 300 uh, kilometers per hour. But uh, at that time, Liu Zhejun think uh, it's not reliable, so introduce uh, high technology from uh, foreign companies. I think uh, most technology, key technology, has been owned at the present by the Chinese company. Uh, I'll tell you what, I was in Shanghai uh, shortly after they launched this maglev from the airport to uh, Shanghai. And I, I will say it was probably one of the most ex amazing experiences that I've ever had on any train. I, I feel like I was on a plane, actually. But a lot of people will say, hey, if you want to go faster, that's fine. But there's also the issue of safety as well. Do you have any concerns regarding safety when it comes to high-speed technology? I think no problem. Before the uh, high-speed rail operation between Beijing and Shanghai, I was invited uh, to check the, the high-speed rail. This time, I joined a 30 expert, uh, uh, expert team to check the high-speed rail. When they go back, they operate at 350 kilometers per hour from Beijing to, from Shanghai to Beijing. So only four hours, so at present, is operated at 300 kilometers per hour, so it's more safety. But even it will not become higher and higher because it's not an uh, economy, because the air resistance is proportional to the square of the speed. So the energy exhausting will increase greatly, so it's not to become, become higher and higher. At present, I think it's very safety. Help us understand this whole this whole merger thing, because you know I was around when a lot of these IPOs took place. Talk about China Railway construction and these three big, three big firms uh, merged into one real giant firm. In the end, explain why this is a good thing to have sort of less competition and have one big company building all these, all these trains. I think uh, uh, it's a good thing for China. Because every country, for example, Japan, Germany, France, and uh, uh, Canada only has one rolling stock uh, railway company. But uh, China, if you have two, they will, there will be a uh, very strong competition, cut through the competition between these two companies. So if they uh, in word, uh, become one company, they can uh, more uh, has a competitive advantage in the, in the overseas market. But well, I, also I, I, I was actually, I was actually going to ask you about that because, you know, we do a lot of headlines about China bidding for overseas projects in Latin America. I mean, even I just mentioned the Boston one as well. And we talk about being competitive. How competitive uh, is China's railway companies when you compare it to other ones like, for example, the Canadian one, uh, Bombardier, or the ones in Europe as well? Is it very, very competitive? Is it a cost issue or is it a technology issue? Uh, I think uh, in the technology issue, they are same level. But on the cost, I think uh, the cost is, has a greater advantage than other companies and foreign companies. 